if you're a video editor you're missing out on a lot of views for yourself and for your clients because you're not using that effect so basically what i'm gonna show you today is a 3d shadow that will give you a lot of depth to the video It's a pretty unique and eye-catching effect, so I think you should know that. So without further ado, let's get straight into Adobe After Effects. So for today, I prepared two assets, which is basically a background and a character. So if you reorder it, you're gonna notice. So here, what we need to do is cut out the character and we can do it inside After Effects. So there's no need to go to Photoshop. And by the way, I use DALI to generate images in ChatGPT. So as for the character, we're gonna trim it to one frame. I'm gonna double click, go to the Roto Brush tool, and we're gonna simply drag our tool through his body. So right now it's important to do a good job. We don't really want to have any errors. If you hold Alt, you can deselect. And the most important part are the shoes. All right, honestly, I think it's good enough. So we're gonna hit freeze, go back to the main window. And as you can see, we got some white spots over here. So for this, I'm gonna shift edge to minus 50. And right now it's gone. The next step is right clicking that layer, recomposing it, make sure to select that circle and we're gonna rename it to man, hit enter then right click, time, freeze frame. And that way we got a pretty much set up character. As for the background, we're just gonna scale it up a little bit to fill out the whole frame. And in order to create that 3D feel, we need to create a camera. So I'm gonna right click, go to new camera and make sure you're using the preset of 80 millimeters. Later on, if 80 millimeters doesn't work, then we're gonna change it to something different. But for now, let's leave it like it is. I'm gonna hit okay. Okay again, then go to new, no object rename to cam control, and then we're gonna parent the camera to the null. I'm gonna select both, drag them underneath and change the color. Now I'm gonna turn on the 3D layer on everything and we're pretty much set up. I'm gonna open up the second view and now it's quite important to create a little bit of space between the character and the background. And you know, usually we would create a big separation between these two, but the problem is that the character is gonna levitate if we put it too far away, especially that we got the floor over here. So for this, I'm just gonna select the background, hit P, and with the value for Z position, I'm just gonna increase it a tiny bit. Okay, it's gonna be barely noticeable, but there's a little bit of separation between these two. Now, it's important to create our shadow. So for this, I'm gonna duplicate man, I'm gonna rename it to shadow, and we have to hit R and play around with X rotation. I know it looks weird, but it's gonna be fine. So in order to imitate the shadow, we have to make sure that the heels are kind of close to each other. So we're basically trying to achieve that look. So basically I'm just trying to kind of combine the feet together. I'd probably put it a little bit lower. And you kind of want to have the X rotation according to the floor. So for now, I feel like it's perfect. If you start checking it out here, it seems fine to me. And now the thing is that we have to first go to scale. I'm gonna uncheck proportions and I'm just gonna increase the X and I would probably decrease Y, so the shadow is not that long. Then I'm gonna check it back on and move the feet closer like that. As I'm looking at this, I feel like we could actually bump up X to something like that, perfect. I'm gonna check it back on. And now, as for the shadow, we're gonna add the effect called Fill. We need to go to Color, change it to Black, hit OK. And what I'm gonna do, because it's kind of not really working well, is use the Pen tool. So we need to mask it out according to our shoe, just like that. Then do it on the opposite side and we're just gonna create a mask around our shadow. Okay, something like that should do, it's not ideal, but once we add the effect called Gaussian Blur to this and we bump up the blurriness, it's gonna be way better. So now we're ready to create the movement and you're gonna notice that depth. So for this, I'm gonna hit P for cam control, create a keyframe for position, move backwards as far as the frame allows. And then we're gonna move somewhere here and we're gonna increase the value. Okay, I'm gonna select both, easy ease, go to the graph editor, fit all graphs and we're just gonna create a peak on the left so let's drag the yellow dot and also the other yellow dot to the left and that's what we got it's already giving us a lot of 3d feel which is pretty cool but as you may suppose the shadow is not that intense so for this i'm gonna hit t and i'm gonna decrease the opacity like that okay way better and now here's the thing i feel like the movement is not that intense so i'm just gonna squeeze in the keyframes and that's giving us a lot of 3D feel. It's a pretty unique look, and once you add a little bit of wiggle to this, so let's say we're gonna alt click the point of interest, type in 2, let's say 15, let's hit enter, actually click away, then you're gonna get that realistic feel. So that's pretty cool. Also adding a little bit of motion blur, and that's an awesome way to create an animation that is really realistic. You could obviously go to the camera and start playing around with different presets. So for example, if I set it up to 200 millimeters, hit OK, then go to positioning the camera, move it away. The shadow is gonna be more squeezed in. So the bigger the preset, the less the shadow will be extended. So here, that's how it's looking. As you can see, the shadow is barely moving. But if you went to the camera and changed the preset to, let's say, 24, hit OK, then adjusted the position, 
like that. You can tell already that the shadow is really extended. But the thing we've created before, which is like the 80 millimeter preset, so that's the one, is looking the best. So yeah, that's a pretty cool way. You can always bump up the scale for the background, drop another asset onto the timeline. Let's say this one, I'm gonna just put it here, turn it into 3D, and I'm gonna go to second view. I'm gonna zoom out, put it in front of the man, scale it down, and we're gonna have a pretty cool animation with a lot of depth. So that's pretty much it for this animation. Hopefully it was insightful. I've used it a ton of times to give that extra spice to the video. With that being said, I'm gonna wrap it up here and I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers guys.